Hey guys, welcome back, I'm Jay. In this episode, we're gonna look at S3 cross-origin resource sharing. Before we talk about the cross-origin resource sharing or course, let's talk about the same origin policy. The same origin policy is a security mechanism, which allows scripts in one website to access data on another website, only if they are in the same origin. These data can be web pages, APIs, icons and fonts, and media files. The same origin policy prevents malicious code on other websites to access restricted data on your website. For instance, you have licensed icons and fonts hosted on your website. You want to display these licensed contents only if the requests are from the same origin, and prevent other websites to load these contents. Otherwise, anyone on the web can request these resources, and incorporate scripts to load them on their websites. With same origin policy, you can prevent other websites to display your licensed icons and fonts on their websites. Here's how browsers determine whether two web resources have the same origin. For two resources to have the same origin, they must have the same protocol, port, and host. Let's look at the example of the same origin policy here. You have one origin which is the cloudomy.tv slash index webpage on the left. It's trying to access data from other web resources on the right. The first resource cloudomy.tv slash fonts on the right has the same origin as cloudomy.tv index page. Both resources have the same HTTP protocol, the same default port which is port 80, and the same host which is 3w.cloudomy.tv. Therefore, cloudomy.tv index page can access the data from cloudomy.tv slash fonts. All other web resources are considered as different origins. The second resource uses HTTPS protocol which is different from HTTP. The third resource uses port 81 which is different from the default port 80. The fourth resource api.cloudomy.tv uses a different subdomain from the 3w subdomain. The same origin policy restricts cloudomy.tv index page to access the data from these resources. Course stands for cross-origin resource sharing. When you build websites, sometimes you want to load scripts to access data from other origins. For instance, you can incorporate scripts to load stock exchange information from another financial news website, such as Yahoo Finance, and display it on your website. Course enables resource hosts to specify which origin should have access to which resource, and HTTP methods in which requests from those origins need to use in order to have access. It's common to use course policy to allow API access from trusted origins. You can define the trusted origins on your course policy. For instance, you can allow read and write requests to your APIs, if the requests are from the origin on your allowed list. You can define specific HTTP methods allow to access your APIs from trusted origins, and restrict the access if requests are from unknown origins. In this example, api.cloudomy.tv allows all HTTP methods from the same origin. It only allows GET requests from the trusted origin, and restricts all methods from unknown origins. You can enable course in S3 to allow resources stored in one bucket to be accessed from a different origin. For instance, you can enable your website hosted in one S3 bucket to access resources in another bucket. Suppose you have an S3 bucket called My Bucket hosting a static website, where you want to request data stored in another bucket called My Data. You need to enable course on the My Data bucket to allow requests from My Website bucket. With course support, you can build rich client-side web applications, and selectively allow cross-origin access. You can configure S3 bucket to allow cross-origin requests with course configuration. Course configuration is an XML document with rules that identify the origins and request methods, which are allowed to access your bucket. You can enable course through AWS console, API or SDK. You can add up to 100 course rules to the course configuration. Each course rule in the S3 course configuration XML comprises the following elements. The allowed origin element specifies which origins are allowed for cross-origin requests. You can use the asterisk wildcard. For instance, asterisk.mywebsite.com allows all origins from the subdomains of mywebsite.com. The allowed method element specifies which HTTP request methods are allowed. You can add multiple allowed method in a course rule to allow multiple HTTP methods, such as get, put, post and delete. The allowed header element specifies which headers are allowed in a pre-flight request. You can use the asterisk wildcard. The max age seconds element specifies the time in seconds that your browser can cache the response for a pre-flight request. 
Each expose header element identifies a header in the response that you want customers to be able to access from their applications, such as XAMZ server side encryption header for encryption. In this example, the course configuration allows get request and post request from all subdomains of mywebsite.com. In this episode, we've learned S3 cross origin resource sharing. Course enables web resources to allow controlled access from trusted origins. You can create S3 course configuration to enable resource sharing from one S3 bucket to another bucket. Okay, that's all for S3 course. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode. Hope you've enjoyed watching this episode. If you like the video, please help us and hit the like button. If you want to watch more tutorials, please subscribe to the Cloudomy TV channel. Make sure to turn on the notification and stay tuned. At Cloudomy, we're passionate about cloud and AI technology. Please share your feedback and thoughts in the comments below. Feel free to let us know what topics you'd like to watch. Happy watching and happy learning.